Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here, and we're back to Fate Reforged Swiss Draft. In that last one, oh man, if I had known the Outpost Siege was worth uh, six tickets, I would have taken it just for the six tickets, because that buys two packs of uh, Cons of Tarkir, unfortunately. Um, so, uh, actually, I mean, power level wise, I don't regret taking the heel cutter because I do actually think the heel cutter is more has more impact for our deck than that than the outpost siege would have not that I mean outpost siege is a great card too limited or constructed but I guess that red white aggro uh the red red white aggro deck in standard like jacked up the price of that card a bunch so I actually went back to my inventory and I had two of them from previous drafts so I at least sold Sold my old ones and made a bunch of tickets off of that. But yeah, if I could go back, I would take it just for the six tickets. Um, in this pack, I mean, there's a Whisper and a Wild Call. The Whisper is, you know, good ramp. But Wild Call is one of those cards that's good early and good late. So I'm going to take that one. I mean, it's a two-mana Manifest or an eight-mana 8-8 eight, eight Manifest. So they're both pretty good. Soul Flare. I saw this deck in... Uh, constructed with like chromanticore and it's pretty cool actually that is a cool card um let's see if there's something better in here though uh probably the reach probably reach is better soul flare is not worth anything right it can't be yeah the chromanticore deck has not affected the soul flare price uh let's just say like reach I actually like green black base. It lets me still go Abzan or Sultai, both of which are good. And uh, we're not really giving up too much. I'm giving up like a Hunt a week, which is, you know, a fine card too. Reach is better though, I think. So let's take it. And I know I probably shouldn't have the Wild Call in the two drop slot, but so be it. All right, I think we're just going to snap up a Typhoid Rats here. Nothing else is, like, bonkers good in here. I actually like Rage Form quite a bit. Um, but, yeah, let's, let's take the Rats. I'm cool with that. Okay. So now it's Frostwalker for Sultai. But probably not, even though I do like it. Um, I could take the Gurmag Angler. Which I'm okay with. I like Angler. Angler. Maybe I get some, uh, a probably table grave strength. Sets me up for like a Sultai deck, which is fine. Otherwise, I could take the Thornwood Falls just on the hunch that I'm going to go Sultai, but I don't know if I'm going Sultai yet. I could still end up going uh, Abzan. Black, green, splash, white. I'm going to take the angler. We're going to try and stay a bit more open. I mean, right now we have three black picks and all green picks, so I could actually go any direction I please. Um, I like Ruthless Instincts. That's a that's a good uh, that's a good trick. Otherwise, Formless Nurturing and Map the Waste are both fine. And Right of Undoing is good if I ended up Soul Tie, but I actually like the Ruthless Instincts. I think, I mean, I want to make Wild Call work because it's a good card. And Ruthless Instincts is a good trick, so I think I'm just going to snap that up here. Let's see how that pans out for us. So we're a bit all over the board, but I kind of like our first few picks. Cheap Death Toucher, uh, card that's good early or late. Ooh, there's a Grim Contest. That's a pretty good one. Um, otherwise, another Typhoid Rats I'd probably pick before a Carsey High Priest, but... Grim Contest is a very good card, so happily snap that up. Yep, so still have both Sultai and uh, Abzan as potential options here. Uh, I think I'm just going to take the Inoc Guide. It's a good bear. I like that it can potentially, you know, fix at the cost of your next draw. I think that's pretty good. Otherwise, uh, Whisk Away. Shifting loyalties never really panned out too much in this format. I haven't. I played it like in the beginning, and it was okay. It wasn't great, but yeah, not very popular card. I don't think. So yeah, let's just snap up an Abzan guy or I not guide rather. It's a nice bear. 
Um, I'm going to take Hunt the Week. I like the card in general. And green removal. Whiskway's fine in blue, but like I said, I could still end up... Could still end up Abzan. Dismal Backwater is a good Sultai land. And, but we only have one Delve spell. I, and I'm, I still want to be more open. Because I do like both the green and black picks we have currently. I, I mean, I don't need to play two color. I really don't. So, okay. Now I can take Cash Defenses. Which is more of a beatdown card. But it's a good card. Or I take a second Angler. Which is fine too. They're both fine. I almost feel like I'm not going to have a problem finding anglers later. And cash defenses off a two-drop creature is, or a one-drop creature is pretty sweet. Especially with, like, double hunt the week. Yes, there's another map to waste, but let's, let's take the hunt the week. Those are good cards. Hunt the week is a nice, nice way to kill a creature. So we have three fight cards and a Reach of Shadows already, and a Ruthless Instincts. We're actually good on, like, removal front, which is usually a good position to be in. So now we just need to take more quality creatures, um, which is also okay. I, I'm hoping we can find that. Remember, Wild Call counts as a creature, too. So we already have, like, four. Um, that's interesting. guess we could take Ambush, just in case... Well, even if Sultai's open... Well, I'm not going to take a Neutralizing Blast. All right. It does look like red's open. Three late red cards. None of them are amazingly good, but they're all, like, you know, pretty satisfactory. So, yes. Removal heavy so far. Just need some more cheap stuff. Grave Strength's an option. I'm willing to indulge. Right about doing this late is, is pretty unique because it's good. Um, I mean, it's certainly better than Sibzig Host. Sibzig Host is good with Delve, but I'm going to take the right about doing just in case. I'll cut the blue. Just in case Sultai is open, I'm probably going to want these cards. So, Because right about doing, like I said, is good. And I guess we already have an Angler, which has Delve. And Grave Strength is... Eh, it's not a great card, but... It's a Sultai card nonetheless. All right, so we open a Sultai rare in Rakshaza, but I'm not, like, blown away by Rakshaza. Probably rather just have a throttle. I mean, Rakshaza's better with all the fight cards we have. We are going to want some, some actual creatures. But throttle is pretty good. I mean, I think Throttle's better for the most part. Especially this early. Like, just getting all this premium removal is probably okay. I mean, Rakshasa could table, too. Unless someone's dedicated Sultai with a lot of Delve, they may not even be interested in Rakshasa. Whereas, I don't think Throttle's going to table. Let's take the Throttle. I like it. Ooh, Spell Snatcher. Well, I've played Spell Snatcher a few times. It's a fun card to play. Main issue is it's not very playable when blue's your splash color. I mean, you can morph it out and stuff, but... Yeah. We could take the Hooting Mandrills. There's an incremental growth, but we're short enough on creatures where I think we can bypass that. Let's just take the, the Mandrills. There is also a Jungle Hollow, but, I mean, at this point, we're two color. Man, I all I talked about before was, like, how I like three color more, but does seem like two color has been available a lot, doesn't it? I mean, I don't have to go two color here. I'm still willing to splash for blue. But like I said, Spell Snatcher really isn't worth splashing. And Rock Shaza is probably worth splashing if I had more Delve. But Mandrills is just certainly good in this deck. Grim Contest, Double Hunt the Week. And it can get cheaper with early trades and stuff. Yeah, we got to take the, the Mandrills here. Okay, probably Scavenger, which I'm fine with. Not really much else in here for us anyway, so seems like an easy pickup. Okay, Soothsayer's good. Swarm of Bloodflies is fine. Loxodon is good with all the fighting we have. I mean, I could just play a Rock deck, I guess, since I don't have any fixing.
I am in need of more creatures. And actually, Soothsayer is good with Hunt the Weeks and stuff, but... And it's good at making our... Hmm. It's interesting. With no fixing, how realistically can I make Sultai's Soothsayer work? We already have three Delve cards, which really does make Soothsayer pretty good. And I guess we have an Inoc guide to help fix for it. Hmm. Yeah, I guess there's enough. I mean, there's quite a bit of upside to Soothsayer. It is nice to go lock it on Hunt the Week and be able to kill two toughness guys. I'm going to take the suits there. We'll see if we can't find some fixing. Well, there's a Sultai Ascendancy, but I think we're more interested in the Nightblade, which is going to work better with the Hunt the Weeks. And not really give it up much, so that makes sense to me. Um, Scout the Borders is probably right in line with what we want. This way, even if we don't end up in blue... Uh, if we do end up in blue, though, we get this, too. Hmm. I'll have to keep that keep that option there. But, yeah, Scout the Borders is going to be great for this deck with triple delve. I think regardless of whether I play, play blue or not, we definitely want that Scout the Borders. I like the Scout the Borders more than the Grave Strength. Um, well, Feed the Clan paid off once as a sideboard card, so we'll see if we can't make it happen again. Uh-huh. Let's see. Archer versus, I guess Witness is better with our fight cards. Don't really need the Blossoming Sands unless I'm going Abzan, which I don't think we are. And Tusk Colossodon is a card I don't really need, but all right. Incremental Growth, sure. I mean, it's powerful. All right, I, maybe we're not doing blue. So, I guess I should have taken... Uh, wait, what did I take the Soothsayer over again? No, I can't remember. I don't need this, but I'm going to cut green. Swarm Bloodflies. I think I took it over a Swarm. That's kind of funny. Swarm's pretty interesting with, like, Nightblade, too. All right, I'm going to hate the Trumpet Blast. Just because we look pretty vulnerable to cheap decks. So, pack three. I guess at this point, we're pretty much just two colors, so... Pack three, I'm just going to want uh, a bunch of cheap creatures. And then I have to be willing to cut some stuff. Like, probably incremental growth. Just because a removal heavy deck with incremental growth doesn't seem very likely. It's more like you just want... This deck just needs a bunch of creatures. And I think it'll be good. I don't even like the Tusk Colossodon. We already have enough late game. Just need some nice cheap creatures. Jeez, Crater's Claws. Uh, Mandrills, number two. I think we want the Flare, though. Flare fits our curve a bit better. It's still good with all of our fight cards, and it works with Mandrills and Angler and Witness, I guess, for gaining us some life. I do like Mandrills, too, uh, but we only have Grave Strength and Scout the Borders, and we're not in blue, so... Could take the bitter revelation. That makes all three of these cheaper. Hmm. No, I like the life gain. We look we look mid rangey enough where I think I'm gonna need flare. I do like bitter revelation too for this deck. I really do because triple delve would be very nice with that, as well as the card advantage. But I'm gonna take the flare. Pine Walker is quite good. There is a second scout, but I think that likely tables. And there's a scavenger, which is good too. But Pine Walker is just a great card. Can't deny the Pine Walker. So I guess we're playing a rock deck. Which, like I said, is fine. But I'm pretty desperately hunting for some more early plays. I mean, thank God for this wild call. So I at least have like a, a bear in this deck. And the Inoc guide. I'm not sure about Grave Strength in this deck. I mean, yes, it makes my Delve cheaper. But I don't even have like a ton of creatures to to mill. Well, we'll see with the next few picks. All of our fight cards aren't going to be great, though, unless we get, you know, some more early stuff. Okay, well, this is interesting. I probably take the Highland game. There is a Dismal Backwater, which would help put me in um, Sultai, but I'm not even convinced that's necessary anymore. We've got this entire pack to get through already, and... I think we've just got better options coming, like for two color. Carry Lichlord's fine, not amazing. 
Highland Games just like a nice early play. It doesn't work well with our fight cards, but having an just having some early game is really all I need. All right, I think Bitter Revelation is going to be the pick here. Uh, despite the fact we've, we're a little bit 4-drop heavy. Having Bitter Revelation is really good for this deck, I think. With the triple delve. There is Roar of Challenge, which is a really good card, too. And Smoke Teller, which I'd take. And some good Sultai cards, which would be fine if I was for sure Sultai. But I really have not prioritized fixing it all this draft. So I think two colors going to be where we're at. Let's take the Bitter Revelation. I can't believe how much two color I've played though. I got a it's pretty amazing. I don't know how easily two color has been to assemble the last like four drafts. I haven't even been trying super hard. Um it's just those those colors have just been flowing pretty nicely. So the stack's short on creatures. We only have twelve. Which is definitely low. Could take the Jungle Hollow. There is a Sedisi's pet, which is another creature. Hmm. How good? Pet's very good with the cash defenses. And it's pretty good with Hunt the Weak. It's actually not bad in this deck. I might not even need the Jungle Hollow. It does make our mana better. But if we're two color, and I'm sure I only have 12 creatures, including Wild Call, I kind of need this pet, to be honest. As much as I loathe to say I need this pet, because you never want to say that. But <laughs> all right, here's our 23rd card, Debilitating Injury. I like the Parapet with the Grim Contest, but Debilitating Injury is where it's at. I love that card. Okay, this is interesting. I'd probably take the Ancestor. Works uh, pretty well with Merrick Nightblade. And it's just like early defense. What can I cut for Disowned Ancestor? It works, yeah, it works well with the Grim Contest. I do like that. I don't know what I'm cutting for it, actually. I kind of like everything else we have in our deck. Maybe I don't need Double Hunt the Week. I think it's a fine card in general, but... Maybe a little bit tougher to play in this deck. I could see maybe cutting one of these. Windstorm's a good sideboard card. We have, like, no flight defense either. Oh, I guess we have a Swarm and a Sultai Scavenger. And we have some removal. I guess we do have flight defense, but this is good against the Skies deck, and I just don't think we need a Shambling Attendance. Um, Horde Ambusher's a good aggressive card I would like to not play against. Uh, scavenger number two might actually be the pick. Rough Riders, certainly good. Um, this is interesting. If I were to play a second scavenger, what would I cut? I almost feel like we don't have enough early game to support four delve cards. We do have scout the border, so I guess I'd take the scavenger anyway, just in case I want to play it. All right, here, Lich Lord. Guess, whatever. Somehow we managed to not table. That's actually impressive. We managed to not table, uh... Um, I could take a Smoke Teller. Soothsayer is the best card to hate. I'm going to take a Smoke Teller just in case we need it. Take a Banner, sure. Okay. So we didn't table to Scout the Borders, which is kind of interesting. Um, I think this deck's fine. 14 creatures, including the Wild Call. We have a relatively good amount of early game. Um... Swarm of Blood Flies is probably fine. Pros and cons of this deck. Pros are removal looks good. We've got an injury, a grim contest, ruthless instincts, hunt the weak, reach of shadows, throttle. That's a lot of removal. Cons of this deck. Wish we had more early game. I'm debating cutting the Sedisi's pet for um, the second scavenger. But what do we have to power out scavengers? We have Scout the Borders and Bitter Revelation, which admittedly is not bad, but...
Hmm. Pretty happy we have Scout the Borders and Bitter Revelation in this deck. I think they're pretty important. I'd probably... I'm trying to think if I'd rather cut the Pet or the Witness. Because I can't decide. If I wanted to run this, this second Scavenger, do I want to run Grave Strength too? I kind of don't. Is that wrong? I don't like this card all that much. I feel like it's kind of a do-nothing a lot of the time. Do I like Disowned Ancestor in this deck? Kind of. Works well with Flare. Works well with Nightblade. It's not that great of a card in general, but it's okay. It looks like it could be good in this deck. I think Incremental Growth's a strong card. I don't know if this deck wants it. I feel like it's, with only 14 creatures, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Especially since quite a few of our creatures are in the late game. I think we're going to have a hard time maximizing Incremental Growth in this deck. Um, so really, it's like, do I, I kind of want to make this second scavenger work. i got to find a good way. I think I either cut the pet or the witness since we probably already have enough early game with Rat's Ancestor. I could cut the... Well, all three of the creatures that I'm debating between work well with Flare, but I like Highland game too much against uh, aggro decks. It's just too important. Disowned Ancestor is not very good against like Death Touchers so much, but it does work well with Flare and Nightblade. I could cut the pet, maybe? Because Witness works better with, like, Hunt the Week, and I guess they both work with Grim Contest. But Witness is... I don't know, actually. This is tough. I probably cut the pet for a second, Scavenger. Now, so I have four Delve spells. I have Scout and Bitter Revelation to power them out. And uh, some removal, which helps power it out. Yeah, this looks all right. Oh, yeah, the, the cash defenses works well with pet, but only if it's the lowest toughness creature I've got out. I think this looks fine. This looks all right. Wish I had a little bit more early game, but I think Scout the Borders goes a long way with making these cheaper, which is nice. And so does Bitter Revelation. We do have a fair amount of life link with, or not life link, but life gain with Sultai Flare and Highland game. Um, yeah, I guess I'm willing to play it like this. I think it looks fine. I don't think I need to run the second Hunt the Week. I'm not opposed to it, but... I think we're in good shape on the removal front, right? Debilitating Injury, Grim Contest, Ruthless Instincts, Hunt the Weak, Throttle Reach, yeah. I think we're good on that front. We've already got enough creatures, I think. Full 14 is satisfactory, so, all right. I think we're going to try it like this. This is my first rock deck, I think. We didn't get any fixing, but that really doesn't matter since we're not very color-intensive whatsoever. Even our double green spell... Pine Walker is not particular. Well, I guess Wild Call is double green. I think I want to be erring towards black still. Yeah, I think I still want to err towards black, despite the fact that double green would be necessary to play a turn two Wild Call. You usually don't want to play a turn two Wild Call. You're just doing it to, you know, catch up or something. Um, overall, yeah, I think this deck is fine. Nothing, like, amazing, but it's got some cool plays in it, for sure. So, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm satisfied with this. We'll, we'll try the deck like this, and uh, we'll see you around one.